Welcome to another episode of Varsity 360. I'm Colombian sports editor Micah Rice, joined again by Will Denner from the First Pacific Financial Studios. And we are back in the new year, 2024. It should be a really exciting season for high school sports in Clark County. And uh, we're going to talk some uh, boys basketball because the one theme that I think has kind of become apparent here in the early part of the season is how much competitive balance there is among all four really boys basketball leagues in 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 our area so uh, uh i've got a full sheet cheat sheet here that uh you know will does two. Too. Uh, <laughs> you, you got me and, and your your type is smaller there so <laughs> so you you outworked me in the research department but uh we're gonna get right into it and uh yeah i we we kind of thought we made mention of this earlier that it was kind of funny how in football, the most unpredictable league uh, this fall was the 2A Greater St. Helens League. And basketball has really kind of taken that baton and ran with it. Uh, we have a very exciting start to the season in the 2A Greater St. Helens League for boys basketball. Six of the nine teams uh, at the time that we're recording this have a winning record in league play. Uh, obviously, the 2A Greater St. Helens League starts league play a little earlier than the other three leagues. But uh, uh, just what have you seen with uh, the 2A Greater St. Helens League boys basketball season so far that has stood out to you? Yeah, I mean, typically, you know, that league title has run through Longview between Mark Morris and R.A. Long. Um, they've they've been the contenders for the past number of years, and Mark Morris finishing second at the 2A state tournament last year. But now we have a, an upstart Columbia River team that already has a win over Mark Morris, lost to R.A. Long. So that's gives you an idea already of the parity there. But then, you know, we have Ridgefield, the team that reached the first round of state last year, seems to always, you know, no matter who's who's on that team, you're in and you're out, um, you know, Jason Buffum, their head coach, will will absolutely maximize what they have. But then you also have Hawkinson, who be, beat Ridgefield earlier this year, um, and even Washougal, um, who beat R.A. Long, I want to say. So that yes, parody at the, at the, toward the top is crazy. And uh, when you, f you know, think of the fact that the top four plus a fifth in the, the uh, 2A district playoff pigtail game, I mean, it's going to be really tough for those top five to get in. Well, I, th I think Washougal kind of announced to the rest of the league that this year might be a little different when they opened league play by knocking off R.A. Long. Exactly. And so, yeah, we'll just kind of go through each of these teams and what issues they they kind of have faced to you know maybe get themselves in the position where they are and maybe what they have going for them that gives them optimism uh, but uh, I think with the Longview schools we'll just kind of touch on them kind of briefly because we'll, we'll focus more on our Clark County schools but uh, with Mark Morris and Ari Long, both of them are trying to replace uh, co off or co MVP yes. types of players. With uh, Ari Long, their state success was really driven by Kevin Holden, yep. and uh, then at Mark Morris, Kobe Parlin, he was really the engine that made last year's team go. But with Ari Long, uh, they've you know seen some players like Lonnie Brown, especially the uh, Lonnie Brown Jr. He's really stepped up the scoring load and uh, uh, gotten Ari Long in a position where, like you said, they beat Columbia River, which had pre previously been undefeated in league play, and kind of reannounced their presence to the rest of the league. For sure, yeah. So Lonnie Brown and, and Tremaine Jenkins are their key players, and um, yeah, like you said, I mean, Kevin Holden was one of the best players in our area for a number of years. He's now playing at uh, Central Washington. Washington. So that's that's a huge thing to replace. And then when you look at uh, Mark Morris, uh, Kobe Parlin, obviously, I, th I think he left the program as the team's uh, all time leading scorer, mm -hmm. but they have another phenomenal scorer in Braden Olson, who's yes. also on our all region team. Um, another very talented player. They have they have some good post players. Uh, Dawson Morrow comes to mind. Uh, another great guard and uh, Malachi Gray. So they've reloaded again and, and should be a tough out. Um, but yeah, it's it considering two teams that want that both made the state semifinals 
uh, one last year and one the year before. Um, you know, some of those top players are gone now, but you know, those programs always reload. Yeah, they always reload. But when a team like a Mark Morris or Ari Long that has traditionally been been good has to reload, it does open the door yes. for some other teams. And River, at least early in the season, has made the case that they are a, a bona fide contender for the 2A Greater St. Helens League title. Yeah, you know, I thought it was kind of funny. We were talking back in the office that uh, longtime coach David Long, uh, his last year, uh, a few years ago, before he, he stepped away into retirement, he he was kind of reflecting about, you know, I'm ready to go, and it's but it's going to be kind of hard because uh, when that year's fr- – he said when these freshmen being, you yes. know, a, a few years ago freshmen are seniors, this team's going to be really good. And not only do uh, does Columbia River have five seniors to bring that experience, they're two – Best players are juniors. Uh, Aaron Richardson or Aaron Hoey and Ari Richardson yep. uh, are a guard tandem that I think matches up with any in that league. Yeah, for sure. I mean, great shooting team, a team that can push push the pace. Obviously, in transition, I saw them actually opening night uh, play a, a good four A battleground team. They went down seventeen to zero early, end up coming all the way back and winning that game. And it's it's interesting that you mentioned David Long because. He, he retires at the end of the 2021-22 uh, season. Mm-hmm. Then they get uh, Travis Drake last year, and he uh, he's only the head coach for one year. And then now they have Mark Ganter, who was uh, previously a coach at Hillsborough High School in, in Oregon. Um, he actually just took a teaching job at River, not expecting to coach, but then ends up coaching their C team last year and just kind of through those chain of events uh, takes the varsity job this year. So three head coaches in three years, which is, you know, it's, it's a tough thing for a player to adjust to, obviously, but at least there's a little bit of familiarity now with, with Ganter having been there last year and, and uh, yeah, now kind of some uh, continuity um, with their players as well and some of those, those guys, like you mentioned, who have been, uh, you know, stars in the making since they were freshmen yeah and i mean they they have a little bit of size in nico valdez yes. who's a six four kind of a, a wide body guy down on the post but boy do they play fast yeah absolutely and yeah i mean that, it feels like they can play kind of a number of different styles too with with both size and and shooting and things like that so yeah you know you mentioned ridgefield uh they're they're a team that brings back seven seniors but uh they have a talented sophomore in jameson mccann yeah. that uh uh But what I've noticed from Ridgefield, at least early in the season, is that they can really spread the ball around and and have a lot of different players pick up the uh, scoring load, whether that's Cole Chester uh, returning first team all-leaguer, a lot of different ways that Ridgefield can beat you. They're a team that does not have as much size this year. Um, They graduated Sid Bryant, who was a really good post player for them for a couple years there. But now, really, their main strength is their their guard play between uh, Cole Chester, uh, Colton Cass, row who uh, his senior or excuse me junior season was cut short by an ACL injury last year but now they have him back um, so yeah some good pieces there and, and just a team that always plays really hard um, yeah they've already they already got that win over Ari Long they narrowly lost to Mark Morris so they will be in the hunt and uh, I believe they have a game coming up with River soon which will be a good measuring stick for both programs definitely I, I think another team that we, we kind of mentioned as being you know one that has a lot of heart and and a lot of great athletic but also a lot of uh, experience is Washougal. They have nine seniors, mm-hmm. uh, but you look at, at some of their leaders. Uh, you have Holden B, who is obviously known more for his, his football skills, but still a, you know, a six foot three guy that play. You know, he can run the court, and obviously his his passing game is on point uh, with his <laughs> be able right. to read angles and timing and everything. But then you have Mather Mintis and uh, Mason Darling, who also you know bring a little bit of uh, uh, athleticism. And, and skill to that. But, but we, we talked with Washougal that they sort of put the league on notice when they knocked off Ari Long, 44-42 uh, to 42, uh, early in the season. And uh, they, they have one game in, in hand against uh, River, which uh, they were very competitive. Uh, right. You know, came down to almost to the end in that before River got that narrow win. Yeah, another team that, that has a winning record at this point and, you know, a team that I think uh, had some interesting pieces in, in the two past years, but it was just that that 
you know, top tier of the league was so tough, but because it opens up now, they have a legitimate chance as well. And then another team that we want to talk about as well and, and Hawkinson. So, yeah, Hawkinson's really interesting in that uh, they, you know, uh, they have another one with a first year coach in, in Dalton Roush, but mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, they, they have, uh, you know, been very competitive t- uh, to start the, the year. But the, the one thing that I think w- will be, be watching for is that their two league losses have been to Ari Long and Columbia River. Mm-hmm. And while Hawkinson enters uh, the new year with a w- winning record, those two league losses were kind of lopsided. So what I think I'm going to be looking for with Hawkinson is can they narrow the gap between where they were in December uh, compared to the Columbia Rivers and the Ari Longs? Uh, can they narrow that gap where they're now uh, in those games right. against those teams at the top of the league? And at the time we're recording tonight, they play Mark Morris. So we'll get a, a, a better look as to that. But I, I think Hawkinson has some places or some pieces that make it really interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, with four league wins already, that doubles what they had all of last year. So they're already well ahead of pace there. Um, they also have a game coming up against Washugo, the team we just mentioned that will be, uh, you know, that, that could actually end up being a really important one um, in the final standings down the stretch but yeah I mean an interesting team with with a first year head coach they have a good senior class led by uh, Riker Kitchen uh, Grant Gumringer and Andrew Meyer um, pretty experienced group at this point but uh, yeah they they should be in the thick of things as well and uh, it should be it should be interesting to see what they can do down the stretch yeah so I mean the the two agri St. Helens League we've been blessed this 23 slash 24 season to have uh, no weeks that are not interesting in those sports and that continues into the new year so uh, it should be an exciting January and February to see how that league plays out now another league that I think is going to be really interesting just because of the parody uh, jump up to the next classification the three Greater St. Helens League and uh Boy, I, I, I mean, I think this is a three-team race between mm-hmm. uh, Evergreen, Kelso, and Prairie. And uh, I think any time any of those teams kind of go against each other, it, 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 you know, all bets are off. I would say of any league in our area, this is probably year in, year out, the most kind of balanced and has the most parity in some ways. Last year, it was Mountain View that won the league. They had a great senior class. You know, all those guys have graduated now. They they started out 0-3, so they're in kind of a tough spot, but they've you know dealt with some injuries and, you know, some other things. Um, the year before that, it was Kelso with a really strong senior class, and Kelso, once again, is in the thick of things. Um, they have, right now, the best record of any team, uh, overall record, not just in league. Um, they have a good senior class of uh, Hayden Yor and Peyton Stewart, a guy yeah. who gets brought up a lot on this podcast. And um, so they'll, they will uh, they will be in the hunt. Uh, but then, yeah, I mean, you look at Evergreen, that's a team that has some some great guards and Des Daniel and um, Damarian Walden and Landon Rayner. But then they can they can go big with, I would say, our, I think Brett Henry, their head coach, said arguably they're the, the biggest team he's had with the likes of Arthur Ban and Fox Crater and Steve Kanda off the bench. Um, so that's a team that can play in a number of different ways. But then there's Prairie, too, a team that actually uh, reached the postseason last year. They prevailed in that crazy uh, three-team tiebreaker between Evergreen and Heritage to get that postseason experience. They're a little bit on the young side. They have um, a couple sophomores who are impact guys with Cam Newsom and Carson Morningstar. Um, and then they are playing Evergreen tonight. So, you know, again, that'll be a result that, um, that will – will probably be a, a big determining factor. But yeah, it does seem like those top three are really the uh, the separators so far at this point, especially when you consider the fact that they've already played a couple league games beginning with, you know, the opening weeks of the season. Well, if I dare bring up Peyton Stewart one more time, <laughs> I, I, I do only because uh, he is the only first team all leaguer back who did not oh, graduate okay. it, uh, from last year. And so that kind of gives you a sense of the, the uh, similar issues that all these teams are facing, most of them are trying to to replace a lot of talent that has moved on. Right. Yeah. No. It, yeah. Kelso is the same way. Um, yeah. I mean. Pr- yeah. Really, all of those teams. Um, Heritage as well. And uh, yeah, I think. I think. Um, 
I, I think really the the biggest continuity piece right now in that league is the head coaches, actually. Yes. I mean, Joe Kinch at Kelso has been, I think he might be the longest tenured coach now of, of anybody in our area. But then there's J.C. Alexander at Mountain View, uh, Jimmy Tuiman at uh, Prairie, and Brett Henry at Evergreen, Ashton Clark at Heritage. So, um, yeah, I guess I guess in a, a kind of a transition year like that, that helps too. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's been really interesting to see the athleticism on the Evergreen team with yeah. Arthur Ban kind of emerging is one of their leading scorers. Uh, he's a senior, obviously, another football guy who's who's going to play it in, in college at the D- D1 level. But then you, you've had that, you mentioned him, uh, uh, the sophomore, Des Daniel. Yeah. Uh, he's he's the one who's who's really taken on, a, a, you know, a lot of the, the scoring load. Yeah, spot. yeah. Brett Henry spoke really highly of him uh, going into this season. I mean, he, he was an instant impact guy for that team as a freshman last year and um, a guy who's still growing. I mean, I think he's hardly over six feet and he's you know kind of a bigger guard but um great shooter a lot of uh a lot of good you know just talented skills all around but uh yeah and and, i mean really in a way like it's it's rare to see you know a a team with a sophomore essentially is as the main leader but he's kind of already their go-to guy and and has been really since he uh burst onto the scene as a freshman yeah and you mentioned prairie with some of the youth they're they're dealing with where so many of their key players are either sophomores or juniors uh but i i've seen one one senior of them, uh, Solomon Ogbiana kind yeah. of emerged to the fore. Uh, uh, and Prairie is their journey so far this season has been really interesting. Um, they, you know, the record at this point, uh, they only have a couple of wins, uh, kind of a tough uh, non league schedule th- for them. But you saw what they did over the break. Uh, they played some incredibly competitive games up in, at, at the Mount Lake Terrace tournament. Uh, as, as we're recording this, uh, they, they, they lost their last three or three games over the break. But but all were within four points. Mm-hmm. So Prairie is a, a young team that's getting some experience in those close situations, those game end situations where uh, you know you have to manage it a little bit differently. Uh, to me, the key to how successful they're going to be in league is how do they use that experience in league play? Can they take that step to where they're now flipping the coin and coming out on the winning end of those close games? Absolutely. And it's kind of a cliche, but I think it, you know, this happens sometimes with young teams where they kind of need, you know, to take their lumps a little bit and kind of go through those experiences in close games. And, you know, hopefully by the time that they're kind of, you know, peaking at the right time in league play, though they will be adjusted to that. Um, I think they also played RA Long kind of to start the break as well. Narrowly lost that game as well. So, um, yeah, a lot of tough games already on that schedule early. Well, let's move on to the 4A. And again, an, another league that in typically in past years, we would start the conversation with, well, how good is Union going to be? <laughs> and can any is this a year that, uh, whether it was Battleground with Caden um, uh, Perry or maybe Camus in recent years or Skyview when, when they had their teams that uh, you know would go to uh, make a run at state, it was always, is this the year someone knocks off Union? Well, uh, Union and, and their excellent coach, Blake Conley, he, he left, obviously, to... Uh, pursue an opportunity somewhere else. They have a first year coach in, in Gerald Howe uh, and a young team. Um, Union, uh, what have they, you've seen them, what yeah. have they shown you earlier in this year? Well, perhaps no team in the league has dealt with more change, not only between Blake Conley departing, but then also uh, graduating four or five starters led by Yanni Facilis, mm-hmm. who was our all-region player of the year last year. Um, the lone returning starter is Cody Holcomb. He's a junior, um, really athletic, uh, you know, but they're, yeah, they're a young team. Um, Nick Burchett is another player who was on varsity last year, but now has kind of stepped in into a starring role and he's he's uh played well so far but yeah the, uh, kind of much like prairie actually they've found themselves in a lot of close games and um unfor- i mean and you know five points or less type games and have have lost i think all but one of those so far so they're just kind of trying to find you know how in those kind of crunch time moments how can they you know find a basket how can they make a play they've they've been pretty good on the defensive end but I think they're just kind of still trying to figure out all their pieces and then obviously with with the first year head coach I mean that's that's always a tough uh task but yeah I mean they've they've uh you know had a few weeks now to to get 
you know, things ironed out. Um, and another league where they have actually already played Battleground, and so they're they're zero and one. Battleground is one and zero. Um, obviously, that will change after tonight. But uh, that's that is kind of a challenge in itself too, just because each one of those six league games in this league are so important. So, well, let's talk about Battleground. Another team with a first year head coach, but someone who people that follow, uh, especially girls basketball in the area, know very well, and that's Brett Johnson right. taking the reins. Uh, I believe a little bit on short notice. Very short notice, at, yeah. at, uh, at, ba- at the Battleground Boys program. But uh, uh, that, you know, in addition to having a new head coach, we talked about before how their best player last year, Tate Spencer, uh, he, he decided to join a, a, a travel or a, a, how, w- how would you describe the team <laughs> he, he's with? Uh, so it's called Great Futures Prep. It's in Seattle. It's within, it's kind of a pathway program within mm-hmm a high school, um, you know, kind of gives them the flexibility to, uh, you know, study and do classes on their own schedule and then kind of, you know, mix in the workouts and the playing. But obviously they travel a lot too. So they're, um, you know, kind of a way just to get more exposure. But uh, I guess you could call it a travel team, but it's, it's technically within a traditional high school setting, but just kind of a little bit more flexibility for an athlete to plan their schedule around. And we've talked earlier in previous episodes about how that's sort of become a trend with some players and some players do choose that and and that is the right path for them but uh uh back at their high school program his twin brother trey spencer uh he he has kind of taken the reins as as the the go-to scorer for the tigers yeah and he's he's got that same scoring ability i mean he already has games of 26 39 and 43 points this year so he can light it up in the same way and um and they need him to um yeah so he's their go-to player at this point they also got uh, Boston Walker, a transfer from La Center, mm-hmm. and kind of some f- other familiar faces who have who have played with that team in years past, like Noah Curry and Austin Ralphs, to name a couple. But um, yeah, I mean they're they're off to. I mean, considering all another team that dealt with so much change in the off season, I mean, all things considered, I think they're in a pretty good spot right now. Um, and yeah, Trey Spencer. I mean, I think it's. I think you know we got to give him his props too. I mean, we've talked a lot about. Tate Spencer, but he, but Trey has got that same scoring ability and he's, he's emerged as their leader this year and he's off to a great start. You know, another program that's dealing with, with a lot of change. Uh, they do have continuity in the coaching position in Ryan Josephson at Camus, yeah. but talk about a, a roster overhaul. You have, you have Beckett Curry, who the sharpshooter who's back, but they lost three really excellent players last year who graduated: Theo McMillan, uh, uh, Jamison Carlisle, and Josh Dabasinskis. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you, you have a, a great score in Becca Curry back, but when you're uh, trying to figure out who can fill those three very significant roles. There's going to be a little bit of growing pains for a team like Camus. I think we've kind of seen that. Uh, uh, but the question is, how will that team come together and uh, and gel here in the league season? And I think the ceiling is very high for Camus. Yeah, I think they're at this point probably the favorite in the league. I think, you know, their finish last year at State, they took six, which was the best in, in their program history. And it really was those three seniors down the stretch that that um, took them. I mean, Theo McMillan had a phenomenal ending to his uh, high school career and then you know their undersized posts and Jamison Carlisle and Josh Dabasinskis were just all grit all heart and uh, you know a, a starting five that fit really well together so now uh, the main pieces back are those guards and Becca Curry and Jace Van Voorhees. Um, and then Ethan Harris, a sophomore, the, the younger brother of Addie Harris, um, also a Camus. Um, he's now stepping into a much bigger role as a sophomore and, and kind of a bigger guy, but, uh, but has some, you know, shooting ability and a good versatile weapon. But yeah, as far as experience goes, they, they definitely lost a lot of experience. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all comes together in the league. And they've, they've also played a tough, um, you know, early non-league slate. They were at the hard ride, hardwood invite in portland uh, a few weeks ago which was which was a challenge for them but i think uh probably learning learning moment for them as well and uh they should they should be in the hunt this year again for sure yeah and that's a great segue to skyview another yeah. team that has a tough non-league schedule that they arrange for themselves including the hardwood invite over there at, at, in in portland but to, while a lot of teams uh, went out of the area to find games over the holiday break uh skyview arranged a, a trip to uh to the tri-cities yeah. in eastern washington they got a a, a close win against chihuahua that i think really kind of showed the metal that that team has and, and they have some great uh 
uh, experience and athleticism uh, returning in, in Gavin Packer, who we all know is an all-purpose, all-purpose football player, mm-hmm. uh, returning second team all-leaguer, and then their leading scorer in Damari Collins. Yeah, I think of any team in the league, this this is kind of the, the interesting one to me because they do have a lot of um, returning pieces, but then, you know, even when you look at a player like uh, Jackson Filler, who's now a senior, he missed all of last year uh, with an ACL injury, but he was a starter almost every game for them back in his sophomore year. So that's a lot of experience coming back. And then Gavin Purdue is another mm-hmm. senior they have. But then, you know, a guy like Malachi Weimer, who's only a sophomore, but he's already an impact player. Um, Javen Fletch off the bench is another one. So they have kind of some interesting depth and, and you know, in addition to their starting five. And Matt Gruler is, is another great coach in this area. And now another really long tenured one. I think he's been at Skyview for about 10 years now. And, and yeah, their, their record might not, you know, jump out at this moment but like you said they've they've had another really tough non-league slate and uh, I'm very interested to see what Skyview can do in this league yeah I think that's a, a thread that kind of weaves itself among all four teams in that league is that a lot are trying to sort of find that continuity and identity mm-hmm. uh, they all are really uh, after you know losing some key pieces to graduation all have been sort of pretty severely tested in their non-league slate so their their records as we speak uh, may not be very very gaudy or impressive but that sort of belies again though that experience and those lessons that can be learned while going through the fire a little bit and right. so the question is which teams are going to take that experience and use it in the, in the league portion of the play and really take that that uh, talent to the next level well and it's so important again in the foray too because of there only being those six non-league games of course and you know it's it's kind of up to each team how you know tough they want to make it in the non-league but just about every one of them has has done that and uh, are not shying away from a tough game anywhere. Well, and I think every every one of those six league games is going to be competitive. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's touch on the one A's because again, uh, that's that's been a league in recent years that has been really interesting. And in that whether it was Le Center uh, or Kings Way, Kings Way, a team that under Coach Dave and Harmeling uh, made it to the state championship game, uh, or Seton last year making it to uh, the state tournament, we always kind of had a team that we'd focus on as being like, oh, is this the year that Le Center with its talent is going to make a run? And and uh, and so often they did and made it deep into the state tournament or King's Way. Well, you know, there's a lot of upheaval on on all those programs as well, again, with a a, a new coach at at King's Way. And uh, uh, so I think we're going to see a a year where maybe we're not looking at any of the Trico teams as possibly ones to uh, that you'd peg right now to make a deep run in the state tournament. That can always change, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, But still a league that I think is going to be very interesting and very competitive. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's in, in recent years, it's been that, that Seton Kings way matchup that really kind of guides it. I think they meet up for the first time on, I want to say around January 12th. So that'll be a good early measuring stick. Um, Seton Catholic. I mean, I think, you know, they, they got a really key experience last year going to state and they had that, you know, trio of sophomores in particular of Rico George and Brady Angelo and Lance Lee, who who got that early experience and now all are back for their junior year. But then, of course, there's the freshman, Caden Wilson, uh, the son of first year head coach Donald Wilson, who's stepping in. Um, so a pretty young team overall. And I think they're still kind of trying to find themselves. They've also had a couple injuries to deal with early here in the season. But um, yeah, I, th- I think that's a team that's really interesting. And then on the Kings Way side, um, I mean, I don't think we we've touched on it yet, but just graduating a player like Gio Evanson, yes. who um, I believe was a three-time Trico League Player of the Year, in addition to their head coach of 10 years and David Harmeling. That's a lot to kind of move on from and adjust. Um, they have a, a really good senior guard in uh, Jaden Hall, who uh, g- transferred over um, ahead of his junior season last year, so kind of already has a year in that system. Um, he's kind of their go-to guy. Ryan Tyler is another guard who's kind of been um, an important piece for them in the past couple years. So, um, yeah, just another team trying to find itself. And then La Center, I, I, I think it's too early to tell. They've had a really tough non-league schedule as yeah. well, but um, a team that, you know, has, has traditionally been um, a contender 
Twitter, obviously. And uh, yeah, I think they're just still trying to find themselves as well. Yeah, going back real quick to Seton Catholic, I I think this freshman, Caden Wilson, is someone we're going to be hearing about for, for a long time. He's I think he's about six foot three, yeah. uh, moves really well, kind of one of those freshman that looks a little bit older oh, than, yeah. than than maybe uh, uh, you would you would think on you know first glance you'd think oh he's built like a junior or something like that mm-hmm. but but I, I think that's someone that uh, as he kind of works more in that system can be just really dynamic and and uh, uh, kind of one of these slashers to the basket that that can uh, you know that, that can be dangerous. Yeah, I mean, he's already a great scorer as a freshman. I mean, to come into the high school mm-hmm. level, he, uh, I believe it was their game against uh, Evergreen early in the year that they lost, but he ends up scoring 29 points, and, and that was a game when they played without two of those three juniors who were so important to them. So, um, you know, kind of, you know, character-building moments in a way, even in losses. I mean, to, you know, to, to get that experience early in your high school career is important. And, yeah, I think, I think by the end of, you know, this season and even going into next season, he's, he's going to be their guy. Yeah, well, no shortage of storylines to follow with boys basketball. We'll obviously touch on, on girls basketball uh, in the future like we have in the past. Uh, we uh, Tonight, we've got a, you know, the huge game between uh, uh, Camus and Union, which, uh, you know, obviously you're going to know the out- outcome of that by the time you're, you're watching this. But uh, we're going to be following all these storylines throughout the new year. It's 2024. We're excited. Hopefully you are too. Thanks again to First Pacific Financial. Uh, check out our coverage on 360preps.com and we will see you next week.